What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to episode 49 of the LAN project here in Football Manager 2019. Hopefully you guys are good. Today it is the conclusion of season 4 here at LAN. We're going to be playing the Irish Association Challenge Cup. We actually take on a surprise package. Dungan and Swifts have uh, well made it to the final. You can see here they narrowly avoid relegation. Uh, they actually finished five points clear, but it was very, very close. They were rock bottom, if I'm not mistaken, for a little while. So, fair play to them for turning their fortunes around. Yeah, you can see, obviously, newly promoted here. If we just have a look at the league pass positions, I'm pretty sure this is going to confirm what I've just stated about the fact that they um, made, a, made a recovery very late on in the season as the year went on. Uh, if we just go to past positions here, Dungan and Swifts, I can't click on the name, please send help. Yeah, you can see here, so they really did struggle, but fair play to them. They went down fighting, and they have survived another season. Of course, for us, the league was pretty much wrapped up last time you were here with the game against Inter. Since then, just to go through these results, you can see we've won all but one game, a draw against Glenavon, who we beat, as you can see here in the Irish Cup. Also beat Bani Mina in the Irish Cup quarterfinal. So taking out perhaps the two biggest teams in the country, besides, of course, ourselves, to get to where we are today. If we just look at the league table, of course, we won the league. But just in terms of where the other teams finished behind us, as I, as I get lost in the menus, you can see here Ballymena second, Glenavon third. So we beat both of those, but ultimately we were head and shoulders above the rest. Unbeaten as well this year, a massive monumental achievement. Last year, just one defeat. Uh, we actually got more points last year because we didn't draw so many. But this year, the unbeaten season achieved. Um, as I talked about last kind of time with the Inter game, I feel like domestically now we kind of just get things under wraps each year. Um, this save game is never meant to be a super long-term save. It was always meant to be a shorter-term kind of project to see how we could get on what could be achieved using youth. And I feel like we've achieved quite a lot, and I'm hoping we can keep it going, of course, today. I think in terms of my remaining goals for this series, I talked about by the end of kind of season five, I wanted to have 30 to 40% of the team homegrown in line with the club's Aspire to Inspire project. Uh, the ultimate kind of aim of that, kind of document is by the end of 2025 so kind of seven seasons into have 50 percent of the team homegrown uh if i'm not mistaken our team would be pretty close to achieving that in 2027 you can see here in terms of players we're going to get homegrown at club uh a fairly decent chunk of players seven to be precise going to get it at the end of this year and uh, well the following year it's going to be another 11 players so yes we are well on the way to getting that homegrown player target achieved which is absolutely fantastic and of course we did reach the Europa League knockout stages. In terms of ongoing goals, I want to make at least one appearance in the Champions League group stage. I think that's got to be a minimum aim, um, you know, before we conclude this series completely. But, well, today we're going to talk all about, well, just the short-term future, I guess, of the series. Dungan and Swift's the team we're taking on. I'm hoping that we're going to mop the floor with them. We've got a pretty strong team at our disposal. The team we're going with here... Pretty much what I consider to be our strongest 11. Perhaps you could argue Lil should be in the team. Um, he's a kind of a player who's obviously been rotated in and out throughout the season. Has played very, very well. Has pretty much at this point become debatably our best player. He's on the bench if I'm not mistaken. I'm going to check this now. I'm worried that he's not on the bench and I might have done goofed a little bit. Uh, I can't see our team because we've not started the game technically can I see it now yes I can so yeah he's on the bench here we could play him if we want to but uh we'll have him on the bench impact player perhaps but yeah um this episode I'll be honest uh, I will first and foremost apologize for the fact there wasn't a video yesterday it was Valentine's Day uh I was a little bit busy not with Valentine's related stuff just life um, but no, we're back today. Obviously, uh, we'll be continuing on with Season 5 next time out. I talked about last episode, um, kind of plans beyond the LAN project. I'm still kind of thinking about what I'd like to do, but I'm thinking a journeyman could be pretty fun. And Dixon, what a goal that is. 15th of the season for him. Kieran came with the assist. Three minutes gone. This perhaps is going to be a bloodbath. That's what I'd expect it to be against Dungan and Swifts. Really, it's going to provide a backdrop for me to talk about things. I feel like I should have scripted a little bit more what I wanted to talk about today. Um, I should clarify, this isn't going to be an episode where after the match we talk for an extended, lot, super long period of time. To be honest, there's not a lot in the way of squad building really to do this year. Um, besides the three foreign players we brought in, who really haven't made a massive impact in terms of becoming first-team starters. 
the team is pretty much the same as it was at the start of the year. You know, there isn't really a massive need for a culling. I feel like we've got a pretty good and balanced side now. I feel like we showed by, um, you know, getting to the Europa League knockout stages that it's a team with some quality. You know, maybe one or two more players would be nice to sign. But realistically, you've seen unbeaten in the league this year. Uh, I feel like we could just stick with the young squad that we've got and continue to let them bubble along and simmer on the surface and well, continue to develop right. Lovely finish by him. A bit of a surprise package, to be fair, Justin Wright. 22nd goal of the season for him. Um, makes it 2 0 here. It's all coming up Millhouse right now. It's all going to plan. We will, before you know, I, I head off at the end of this episode, just look through the player stats who performed well this year, you know, that kind of stuff. But um, yeah, as I alluded to last episode, and um, I feel like it could have been easy to attribute some of the stuff I was talking to to the fact I was feeling a bit down about the manner of our defeat against Inter. But with the save game, I have really been enjoying kind of the challenge of, you know, the transfer restrictions, watching some of our players develop. Um, but unlike some of my saves where it clicks and I want to play it for decades and decades, like the Gibraltar Apex save, um, I'd be lying to you if I was to say the league season doesn't feel like a bit of a slog. Um, not in terms of the games are difficult, but in terms of, as you saw, we went unbeaten this year. And it just feels a bit tedious to watch your team, you know, repeatedly beat teams like, kind of like we're beating Dungan and Swifts here. Um, I've not used instant result, although I do have an instant result button that I could perhaps use, but kind of defeats the point in playing football manager at that point. But um, yeah, I'd be lying if I was to say it hasn't been perhaps slightly detrimental to my enjoyment of the save game. Uh, you know, it's a 38 league game season. There's so many domestic games here in Northern Ireland. Um, it's not really uh, an issue that I think there's an easy solution to, other than the fact that when I started this series, I talked about the fact it was probably going to be a five to seven year challenge. I feel like in terms of what we've achieved within Northern Ireland, we've done well. I wish there was some kind of epic conclusion that we could try and do, you know, but ultimately we've gone unbeaten this year. The epic conclusion would be to kind of win the Europa League or the Champions League. Do I think that can realistically happen? Probably not. Um, it, it would take a fluke. It would take decades of me grinding out the game. And as I said, the domestic season's become a little bit of a slog. So I'm kind of in this weird pickle right now where... I enjoy the same in terms of the youth development side of things, but I'm not necessarily enjoying playing the domestic seasons, which might suck for some of you guys to hear, because I'm sure some of you have been enjoying the series, and I don't blame you. It's been a, a real fun, emotional roller coaster. But as I alluded to kind of last time out uh, with the Inter episode, my longer term thinking with this series is that we'll do next season, we'll try and get to the Champions League group stage. And then maybe we'll take things from there. It might be that I do, you know, the odd update video, you know, intermittently every couple of weeks. If I've played the save game, I talk about it. Um, but I do want to kind of move on to perhaps some other save game ideas I've got going on. Um, one thing that I've traditionally done with my YouTube saves is to, um, if I'm enjoying them, kind of, uh, or if I'm enjoying them, I keep doing them. But if I start getting a bit burnt out, I try and push through it and it doesn't always really work out. One thing I kind of told myself this year was that I wanted to um, do lots of shorter term saves. And I, I say shorter term, next episode's going to be the 50th episode of this series. That's not really a short term save in the grand scheme of Football Manager YouTube. I know there's the epic 200 episode long series that you get, but realistically, this has still been a pretty long running series at four seasons long in the grand scheme of things. But I've got a few ideas of stuff I'd like to do. Perhaps go to England, perhaps to a journeyman. I'd be interested to know. Um, everyone's going to have a different opinion on this. People are going to disagree and not. there's not going to be a common consensus in the comments. I'd be interested to know what you guys would like to see next. As I said, I, I'm committed to this for at least one or two more seasons. There's still stuff I want to achieve, but longer term, I am thinking a little bit ahead, as you know, to wrapping up this series in February, bringing on March, and, well, from March until end of September time, we've got, what, six months there's the possibility we do a series for six months. There's a possibility that we, um, you know, do a journeyman over that period of time or that we just do a couple of series like this LAN one. Perhaps we um, don't have the same restrictions and such, which kind of puts us in a situation where I get a problem like I've got now, if you can really call it a problem. Um, but no, I, I know some people love the lower league to the top. Some people love the journeyman. What would you like to see? I realise that I'm going to get a load of comments of people asking me to manage the team that they support. 
that's not really what I'm asking for here. I'm more asking for what you'd like to see in terms of a general series idea. I feel like I've done the, the lower league to the top English series before. Um, maybe we do something where we start at you know pub level in England and tr just try and see how we get on. Uh, at the start of the year, I really wanted to do a Pentagon Challenge, but um, there was lots of issues with the database editor when the game first came out that meant that a lot of the international leagues that I wanted to have just weren't ready. I think most of them are done now, but I feel like it's almost too late to try and start a pentagon challenge where you win every champions league from nothing but uh, at the same time if like a journeyman kind of save maybe we stick to just england it could be fun to try and work our way to the top and see how we get on i, I know some people are just bored of england saves in general and i feel like there's always an inherent risk of kind of moving around clubs that people just don't like teams that you move to but um who knows maybe it could give me an opportunity to manage leagues that i've not in been in before Anyway, I've already rambled on long enough here. Um, I we, we won the game. It was 5-0. Uh, I appreciate that this episode is kind of just me talking about future plans with this series. I do quickly want to talk uh, about just the team this year because it was a great performance. I mean, you can see here six players reaching double figures for goals scored. Justin Wright leading the way, um, which is really, really impressive. Five goals in the Champions League, four in the Europa League, 12 in the league for him. Um, he's kind of been the leading man. Obviously, we left, let Kayendra Simmons go. He really stepped up and filled that void. And a player who kind of went under the radar a little bit is Stevie Pestridge, who did get a lot of goals in you know the cup competition games. But ultimately, he ended up getting 19 goals for the season. Now, he kind of played all the games that you guys don't see, but he has been a core component of our team. In terms of player of the year, for me personally, it's got to be Lil. Just a top, top performance by him. You can see the fans absolutely love him. Perhaps hasn't developed as much as you'd expect, given the level of performance he's put in. But um, yeah, 20 goals for him and 9 assists. Kenny Dixon as well out on the right-hand side. Kind of, He's always played on the opposite wing um, to Lil. He's done very well too. 6 goals and 4 assists to his name. Really putting in great shifts out wide. And Paul O'Connor. I don't know how to feel about Paul. I kind of felt like his long-term future was as a striker in a two-striker system. The way that we've adapted things, he's kind of found himself more out on the wing as an inside forward. But his finishing just hasn't improved like I hoped it would. Um, I don't know if that's down to the player himself or our facilities. Obviously, our training facilities aren't the best. And development has been a little bit slower. I feel like in FM19, regens aren't as overpowered as they once were in terms of they don't develop at hyperspeed, at least at this kind of team like Lahn. I've not had enough experience really managing top, top clubs to know how bigger an impact, you know, the training facilities and that kind of stuff has on it. But just from my experience here, we've got a lot of players with talent here, but some of them just don't look like they're going to reach it. There have been players who really have improved this year. I feel like... Uh, the Iron Man himself, Robert Downey, the homegrown hero, has done extremely well in that regard. As has the cyborg at left back. He really has developed and well, developed into a great little player, to be honest. He, he looks superb. Hopefully he can keep that going into next year. Maybe even challenge Kieran Kane, dare, dare I say it, at left back. One thing that just springs into mind that I should talk about, um, Northern Ireland national team. People have asked about this. Um, there are currently five, I think, LAN players. In fact, no, I've lied. There's six LAN players in the team. So Paul O'Connor, Andrew Morrison and McCoy, our two centre-backs, are in the national team, which is absolutely fantastic. Kieran Kane as well is in there. Jared Thompson, our goalkeeper, I don't think he's made an appearance yet for the national team, but he is there as one of the backup keepers. And Keith Frame, who had a great year this year, really, has made his international debut. You can see a 7.25 average rating for him. At centre mid, a key component of the team, joined us halfway through last year from Crusaders. It's looking like half a, well, half a hundred grand well spent on him, 49k spent. And uh, yeah, already making a big name for himself on the international stage. In terms of top performers, Neko Williams, when he played, played very well. A 7.72 average rating for him. A ton of assists, as you might have noticed. 12 to his name. Morrison and Kieran Kane, you know, obviously two international players playing superbly. As has most of our defence, you can actually see the top performers this year. A lot of defenders. I do think it's also worth just drawing your attention to just how many games most of our squad has played. I feel like the big disappointment really is Paul Glatzel. Just didn't really give him that many opportunities. It was not really a conscious decision, but with the players that we had, I just didn't find myself with a spot for him in the team. But when you look, you know, above him and the likes of Sub Whale and Newell and also Cockbill, our third choice goalkeeper, 
Uh, most of the rest of the team played 20 plus games, which is great. That really has helped their development across the board. And you can see just by the sheer amount of green, those players have done pretty well. I just want to hit continue once or twice here just to see if the end of season awards come into the item inbox. Of course, next season, we're going to be back into the Champions League kind of qualifiers. That's going to be the big aim as far as we're concerned to get to the group stage. I feel like that has to be the goal. Having kind of had a taste of European success with the Europa League knockout stages, we definitely want to take it that one step further. You can see here board budgets have been set, £105,000 wage budget, transfer budget of £5.1 million. I'm currently looking at this guy, um, Agimang, I guess you'd you'd pronounce it or call him by. Uh, he's a play place Charlton. And to be honest, he looks pretty good. Um, I'm going to try and get him, I think, um, as part of my ongoing hunt for players. He is a player who has been thrown up. Uh, he was on loan at Crew. You can see him here, consistent performer, can play anywhere across the attacking midfielder positions. On loan from Charlton, who are in the championship, he is, I'm hoping, going to be interested in talking to us. He looks pretty solid, and I think it's his versatility that I think could be a particularly useful asset for us in our team. A load of potential. He kind of fits the bill. He is also partially English, despite being a Ghanaian under-20 international um, and maybe he has potential that he can fulfil, but I think he's the kind of player who could could immediately add to the first team, which is something that I have struggled with when trying to identify you know potential transfer targets here. But ultimately, going forward with the LAN project, I don't expect us to sign a whole host of players. I feel like we now have a very settled team that I'm kind of content to see continue to develop. I think you know the the goal for this save now before I hang up my boots or hang up my tie. What does a manager do when they retire? I'm not entirely sure. But really, the goal has got to be get to the Champions League group stage. That is going to be the aim that we set out for ourselves this year. And then let's just take it from there and see how we get on. Um, I feel like that is going to be a massive challenge. I feel like when you just flick through this team and the overall player quality, yes, we have a few standout performers and standout players. But the harsh reality is this is a team that is going to get slaughtered in the Champions League. And it's full of young players who have a lot to prove, and I'm hoping they can develop. Um, but ultimately, we are going to have our backs against the ball wall, and it's not going to be easy. I do feel like with this series, when it's all done, whenever that is, I will probably make the save available for download, probably for Patreon supporters first. But beyond that, I would like to, you know, holiday into the forward and uh, forward forward into the future and see how some of these young players get on, because um, I think that could be pretty interesting to see as well. Anyway, guys, I've rambled on for long enough today. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. Again, apologies for the fact there wasn't an episode uh, up yesterday. Um, next time out is episode 50. I might do, you know, a number of the games in the European kind of qualifying stages. You know, usually we get some easier draws at the start of the Champions League campaign. Um, maybe our coefficient will move up to make our games more difficult. Um, but no, it'd be fun to do something special for episode 50, and that seems like a reasonably good idea. Maybe do the first two or three rounds of Europe kind of qualifying campaign as one longer video for you guys um especially to make up for the lack of well a video yesterday on thursday as you watch this anyway guys that is going to be all from me today thank you for watching let me know what you think um you know in terms of this series i, I realized by saying i don't know how much longer i'm going to keep this series going it might impact your interest in the series i still feel like we have stuff to aim for and stuff to achieve and try and strive for um, but, you know, I am kind of looking at, you know, beyond LAN, what could be next here at Worth the Space. And I definitely want to hear what you guys have to say and what you guys think about it down below. Anyway, that's going to be all from me today. Thank you for watching as always. If you have enjoyed today's video, do leave a like on it. And other than that, it's me, Jack. And I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.